So this was a case of a young male patient in his 30s presenting with a unilateral solitary cortical base kidney mass. We see here on an almost whole mount section of the tumor, the adjacent cortical renal parenchyma with its glomeruli, and also a well-circumscribed entirely cystic mass having a uh, fibrous pseudocapsule at the periphery, which is shown here, and numerous thin septations that divide the tumor into multiple cystic spaces. The cystic spaces themselves are either clear or filled with this eosinophilic proteinaceous fluid. We have to go a bit closer to evaluate the cyst lining, which in this example is mostly flattened and not well discernible. But in some areas it is better preserved. Let me get there. And here we can appreciate, let me go a bit closer, a single layer, admittedly with some focal tufting, which is minimal, of cuboidal cells with clear to some evacuated cytoplasm and low-grade nuclei that are, and this is very important, haphazardly arranged within the cell cytoplasm. So the nuclei in this example are G1, according to the WHO, uh, WHO I subgrading scheme. And like I said, they are randomly distributed. Like if you would want to draw a line and connect the dots, you wouldn't get a straight line connecting all of the nuclei, but you would get more of a zigzag line because some of the nuclei are oriented um, towards the luminal aspect of the cell. Some sit more in the middle of the cell. Some are more uh, abluminally uh, located, basally located. So you have this haphazard arrangement of um, these low-grade nuclei. Another feature that you may see is some, uh, some of the septa are detached and may mimic papillary formations, but they do not have true fibrovascular cores. So this is something important to look out for. And another feature that I would like to show you, let me get there. Here are some macrophages in the cis lumen, but this is what I wanted to show you. This is that some areas contain um, small clear cell clusters within the fibrous stroma of the septa or within the subjacent stroma of the tumor. But these um, clear cells that resemble the cells that um, line the cysts and are found within the fibrous stroma of the septa, they do not distort the um, architecture of the septa. They do not form solid expansile nodules. There are just small, they're just small cell clusters within the stroma, which obviously do not exceed a 20x microscopic field of view. Okay, another thing to notice is that there is no necrosis. The tumor, like we said, is entirely cystic, and there are no increased mitotic figures or atypical mitotic figures seen. So I think now we can reveal the diagnosis. This is a multilocular cystic renal neoplasm of low malignant potential, or MCRNLMP, K-I-S-S-I-N-G, right? This is a mouthful. Even the acronym is a bit of a tongue twister. But hear me out. Multilocular cystic renal neoplasm of low malignant potential is an indolent renal tumor, which is entirely cystic and has a low-grade clear cell lining similar to that of um, clear cell renal cell carcinoma, which is one of the most important differential diagnoses to consider. But we'll get back to that in a minute. So multilocular cystic renal neoplasm of low malignant potential in about 90% of cases is detected incidentally on imaging studies performed for other reasons. It has a slight male predominance and affects a wide age range of individuals. Usually it presents in middle-aged adults, but like I said, this patient was in his 30s, can also affect people of, in their 80s, so wide age range. It usually presents as a unilateral solitary renal mass that is 
cortically based, based in the renal cortex, and in almost 90% of cases, so the vast majority, will be PT1 stage. Crossing is very important because it shows a well-circumscribed, entirely cystic tumor. The cyst content may be hemorrhagic. It may contain clear serous fluid or gelatinous, uh, gelatinous material. There is, importantly, no necrosis. There, are, there is no solid growth. And again, there are no solid uh, fleshy areas that would be indicative of rhabdoid or sarcomatoid differentiation, which is incompatible with the diagnosis of multi-ocular cystic renal neoplasm of low malignant potential. So grossing is very important because of sampling. So microscopically, I think we've already gone through the most important morphological features of multilocular cystic renal neoplasm of low malignant potential. This is going to be a well-circumscribed, purely cystic mass based in the renal cortex that is going to have a fibrous pseudocapsule at the periphery, as well as multiple thin septations dividing the tumor into differently sized cysts. The cyst lining is going to consist of one or two layers of cuboidal clear cells with low-grade G1, G2 uh, nuclei that are haphazardly arranged within the cell cytoplasm. Also, um, sometimes there are small clear cell aggregates present in the fibrous stroma of the septa, but these cell aggregates will not alter the contours of the septa and they will of course not exceed a diameter of a 20x microscopic uh, field. Overall there is going to be no solid expansile growth, no necrosis, no rhabdoid or sarcomatoid differentiation, there isn't going to be any lymphovascular space invasion, the mitotic rate would be low, there would be no atypical mitoses, all of these features are incompatible with the diagnosis of multi-cystic, multi-locular cystic renal neoplasm of low malignant potential and should prompt consideration of a clear cell renal cell carcinoma with cystic changes. Immunohistochemically, multilocular cystic renal neoplasm of low malignant potential has an identical or very similar immunoprofile with that of CCRCC. It is um, positive for EMA, it is positive for CK7. It might show a more intense staining for CK7 than a conventional solid CCRCC because, as a thing to remember, CK7 usually shows a more intense staining in areas of cystic change, and MCR and LNP, being by definition an entirely cystic mass, will of course show more CK7 reactivity. Um, it is of course positive for PAX8, and it is also positive for CD10. CA9 shows that characteristic diffuse membranous circumferential staining, um, box-shaped staining pattern of CCRCC. On the molecular level, multilocular cystic renal neoplasm of low malignant potential shows alterations of the VHL gene. This is similar to CCRCC. So multilocular cystic renal neoplasm of low malignant potential may be seen in a sporadic setting, but also in a syndromic setting occurring in von Hippel-Lendau syndrome. In most instances, we see a complete loss of chromosome 3. Sometimes um, there is loss of only the short arm of chromosome 3, 3P. That is where the um, BHL gene locus is located. In a minority of cases, only inactivating mutations of the BHL gene are ident identified by fish analysis. So regarding the differential diagnoses, because I promised I'll get back to this, I'll only mention three of them. One and the most important is clear cell renal cell carcinoma, especially with cystic changes, but also CCR solid, CCRCC with only focal cystic degenerative changes. So think of a CCRCC with cystic changes when you see high grade nuclei, G3, G4. 
when you see sarcomatoid or rhabdoid differentiation, when you see lymphovascular space invasion, when you see necrosis or also necrotic debris in the cyst lumen is, is also a sign, maybe the area of mucosis uh, eluded sampling at crossing. So it's also a sign that it is present. Uh, when you see a highly invasive tumor, a tumor, an aggressive tumor that shows invasion into the renal sinus, into the perirenal fat, into the renal vein. Also, when you see a tumor with high mitotic rate, atypical mitosis, always take CCRCC into your differential diagnostic consideration. And one thing to, to mention is that uh, in the sporadic setting, I think up to 13% of multilocular cystic renal neoplasms of low, uh, low malignant potential may show associated CCRCCs. And because there is so much of an overlap between these two entities, because there are so many features that have been to be taken into consideration to rule out CCRCC, which is an aggressive tumor in comparison to our indolent uh, MCR and LMP, this diagnosis of MCR NLP should not be made on a biopsy specimen. It should be reserved for a resection specimen. And also, um, you should also exercise caution when, when diagnosing M, um, MCR and LMP in the presence of prominent regression features, as it may be a CCRCC, which is a great mimicker of MCR and LMP. The immunoprofile is essentially identical, apart from that more increased CK7 staining, but the CK7 staining will also be more prominent in uh, CCRCC with cystic changes, so it won't help you a lot. VHL alterations are seen in both, so you have to really rely on these morphological features that we just discussed. A second differential diagnosis is clear cell papillary renal cell tumor. Clear cell papillary renal cell tumor will usually show papillary formations, true papillary formations, and most importantly, that's why I emphasized it at the beginning of the video, clear cell papillary renal cell uh, tumor characteristically shows nuclei that are aligned at the luminal aspect of the cell. You could draw a line that would go, that would run straight through all of the nuclei which are aligned at, oriented at the apical portion of the cell. Also, immunohistochemistry is of use in this differential diagnosis because clear cell papillary renal cell tumors would, would show a characteristic cup-shaped expression of CA9, that is, only the basolateral aspect of the cell membrane will uh, be stained and the apical portion will show no reactivity yielding this sort of sort of cup shaped uh, reaction pattern. CK7 is positive in both tumors but CD10 is negative in clear cell papillary renal cell tumor and clear cell papillary renal cell tumors also frequently expects, express gather free and high molecular weight cytokeratins as an ref has a reflection of their possible distal tubular origin. Clear cell papillary renal cell tumors do not show um, alterations of the VHL gene locus so, or, or of 3P, so this is also an important thing to consider in difficult situations. And the third, different, the third differential diagnosis that I would like to bring up is that um, of a benign cortical renal cyst. Benign cortical renal cysts are usually unilocular and have a non-clear cell lining. They express CK7, but they are negative for CA9, and of course, they do not show alterations of chromosome 3P. And multilocular cystic renal neoplasm of low malignant potential has an excellent prognosis. It is benign. There are no, there have been no documented cases until now of metastases and only I think two cases of recurrences. So it is essential to differentiate this tumor from um, its closest mimic, which is CCRCC, that is an aggressive tumor and has a totally different um, clinical outcome.